Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range and we're here to talk about probably one of my favorite optics, the Trigicon ACOG and all of the different variants that they have to offer. Well, mostly all of them. They do offer a lot of lower powered magnified uh, optics as far as the ACOG goes, but I decided I wanted to kind of stick with just what you guys see mostly, some of the more popular items. And so we're gonna start with the three and a half power and then work our way up all the way <laughs> to the six power ACOG, which is just a thick boy, all right? So let's hop into it. What makes the ACOG so awesome? The Advanced Combat Optical Gun Sight. So first of all, this rifle or this battle rifle optic has been around for quite some time now, a couple of, what are we past, are we almost at two decades at this point? Well, look at it this way. It is literally the most battle proven optic in the world. It is the standard issue optic still today on the M4, M16, the United States Marines utilizing the RCO, which is the rifle combat optic, as you see right here. Yes, just those two. And I do really, really like them. But we're gonna get into the pros and cons and what maybe my favorite one is overall, but let's just go ahead and start with the least magnified, and that's on this guy right here. This is the three and a half by 35 millimeter, three and a half power by 35 millimeter objective lens Trigicon ACOG. Now this one, as you can tell right here, does offer the green fiber optic and tritium. Now that's something else that's really cool about all of these optics is, well, put it this way, thanks to the fiber optic that you see running on top of the optic itself, it'll give you that daylight bright reticle because of the fiber optic running on type it absorbs the ambient light and then there's the tritium that is actually built into the housing of the optic itself which even in the darkest of rooms or night or whatever it is you'll still be able to see a nice glow of your reticle it's a pretty cool thing how it picks all of that up all right now the reticle on this is your standard horseshoe with a dot in the middle so that's kind of a nice little feature it's definitely one of my favorite that pick up because it picks up very easily and it does have your bullet drop compensation and your left and right stadia so overall, it gives you your windage, gives you your elevation, gives you even your holds in case, you know, you got to lead your target some if you're shooting at a moving target, whatever it might be. But there's another reason why the three and a half power by 35 millimeter lens is so awesome. The one downfall that the ACOG has is it's, it has a really short eye relief, or at least on the rifle combat optic, the 4x32, like what you see on these guys. This one, because it's designed to be put on a little bit heavier recoiling guns, like the SCAR, which is known to beat up some optics, especially the older models that had the reciprocating charging handle. By the way, I do like to say the older models that had that because the newer ones, like what you see here and the one down there, this doesn't happen with every single shot. So you can actually, you know, place your thumb in a more comfortable position without having to worry about it getting, you know, chewed off by the charging handle. So thanks FN for finally listening to your consumers. But anyway, I love the eye relief on the three and a half by 35 millimeter uh, ACOG. Why they don't do it on the four by 32s? I guess if you look at the size, even though this is a smaller magnified or at least magnified, less magnified optic, it's much bigger comparing it to the four by 32, like what you see on this build here. So even though it's a half a power difference, it is still overall much larger <laughs> than the 4x32 RCO. So some people might think, you know, that's kind of a negative trade-off. You're getting less magnification and a bigger optic. Doesn't really make that much sense. But personally, I love the eye relief on the three and a half power, so I would prefer to have that anyway. So I'd take the bigger optic at the end of the day. Either way, it's still a chunk of that hanging off your rifle, whatever, I don't think it's that big of a difference. So then again, I'm not the one carrying it around every single day. I've got guys that do that, right? <laughs> Just kidding, kind of. But anyway, cool. So the three and a half by 35 power green, I like a lot. Now we're moving on over to the four by 32s. These right here are the ones that are the most battle proven. These are the rifle combat optics that the United States Marine Corps has adopted and been using since they've been adopted. And we've got a couple of different variants here. And we've also got a couple of different mounting systems. So you'll see your standard mount, which just has your thumb screws, right? Which obviously need to be tightened down on this guy by a lot. So 
that right there is pretty much what's issued is pretty much what we see all of the time make sure that you take your pocket knife whatever tighten that down or you just use a you know the correct size flathead and really tighten down these thumb screws because you don't want your optic to start wobbling or anything because well there goes your zero bye right kind of a big deal you'll also know the rifle combat optics like what we offer on our website come with the little honeycomb that we call it it's a kill flash or a flash hider and that's just so there's no reflective glare if your enemy is looking for somebody or something down range they'll be able to see a reflection off of maybe a weapon light or your optic and having a cover on both of those and making sure your glasses don't reflect things like that are something to take into consideration uh, because well that type of stuff will get you spotted and get you killed in a uh, combat <laughs> situation right so don't do that anyway continuing on with this does come with the kill flash which is a nice thing this one right here does have the standard red fiber optic and tritium and of course has that chevron type of reticle compare that to like a, a standard crosshair like what is on the led model this right here utilizes a crosshair that also doesn't use any tritium or a fiber optic for that matter. It is non-illuminated unless you utilize the battery compartment here. Put your battery in there and then go ahead and set your or set your illumination brightness, right? All of these do have etched reticles though. Uh, you could lose the tritium over time, which these do die out after I think what some of them are like 10 years or so. I mean that lasts for a long time. Uh, but the fiber optic will always still be good unless that cover of the fiber optic right on top gets damaged or you know just gets dirty over a period of time and then starts to really like cover that and you'll notice too like on one of my ACOGs I actually keep a piece of electrical tape over the fiber optic because it can get so bright that it'll actually start to wash out and then you get a little a lot a lot less precise reticle which if you're trying to make those precise shots down range you need something a little bit finer so even if it's not super bright outside I'll still have a piece of tape on there for that type of application that I'll be shooting it on right but anyway coming back to this one here you kind of don't have to worry about that because it's just a battery operated etched reticle LED lit optic and you'll notice on top of this one we also have the Trigicon RMR and notice where it is mounted on the optic as well kind of something different because it's actually mounted forward on the ACOG instead of to the rear and I've been playing around with which one I like more we haven't had one of the to the rear mounted or the rear mounted RMR mounts uh, on an ACOG in a while I think we had one on uh, my high-end AR build from a while ago and I like it, but I really like that having a forward mounted option because you get a little bit larger field of view. So if I got the red dot on, which it is super bright, then you can also just pinch both sides and it'll take you to whatever the preferred setting is for your light, by the way. But anyway, right here is a super easy, again, wide field of view. I can use my peripherals to pick up something over here. I can use my peripheral over here. I'm not having to stay focused through a tube or your magnified optic. I can just kind of pick up here. A little bit further back, it's closer to the eye, therefore it's actually taking up more field of view, taking up more space for you to see. So I personally like to have it a little bit run forward, just like what you see right here. That makes it a very comfortable uh, red dot placement for me, at least. Let me know what you guys think about that and where you like your red dot placement. But okay, so we've talked about the 4x32, rifle combat optic, proven. If you got one uh, made prior to 2010, I believe it is, uh, you will actually might have, like on this one, which is a much older option, you might actually have your Bible verse inscription there, right? There's gonna be a couple of different ones, but they all refer to Jesus being the light, uh, being able to see in darkness, things like that for obvious reasons. And then after 2010, after some, uh, I guess you say political turmoil there, uh, and being politically correct, Trijicon was ordered to remove and even actually scratch off uh, all of the Bible verses on their ACOGs. So go look that up. All right, continuing on. Now we've got probably the precision ACOG. This is the five and a half power by 50 millimeter objective lens on here. This has the largest field of view and largest objective lens, again being 50 millimeters. And this is on our current giveaway, the Nemo Executive Order. It made sense for this giveaway to feature this optic. The 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge is definitely a more of a precision round. It's definitely an accurate round, especially being shot through with this rifle. This thing is just made for distance shooting. And the five and a half power ACOG just made sense for that. Again, you still get that tritium, you still get the fiber optic. And on top of that, you also still get a fantastic eye relief on this one. <sighs> 
unlike the four and a, <laughs> the four by 32, all right? Uh, the three and a half power and I think the three and a half by 35 and the five by 50 are pretty similar as far as eye relief goes. So that's something that I can definitely appreciate. And you'll notice too, you've got the tabs right back here where you can actually thread in your RMR mount. So if you did wanna go ahead and throw on our RMR on this guy on the rear, you can do that. You'll also notice that on the newer RCOs that we have to offer on our website, like this one right here, you have those that mounting site there for your RMR. Easy enough, all right? And yes, this one, like I said, is for your precision shooters. And then you got this thick boy right here. This right here is the six by 48. And, uh, it is huge, it's heavy, and it's also specifically designed for machine guns, but don't tell the British that. If you remember watching our NRA annual meet coverage, you saw me kind of like uh, absolutely drooling over the LMT 308 designated marksman rifle that the SAS use. Love that rifle, and if you don't know who LMT is and what all they have to offer, check them out. But their preferred DMR optic for that gun is actually this optic, uh, which again, I think is Pretty interesting because they, Trigicon designed this ACOG to be more of a machine gun built optic. But I can tell you right now, eye relief on it feels good. Uh, field of view is decent uh, and I, it's definitely a, pre a precise picture. You do have your left and right stadia and you also have your bullet drop compensation. So again, your windage and elevation increments that you can see there. You've also got the Picatinny running right up top, which a lot of people might think, you know, oh, that's a great option for uh, red dots and things like that. Yes, it is, but also keep in mind, night vision, things along those lines uh, for this type of setup, which would be pretty cool. Fiber optic is actually seen right back here, closer to uh, the lens in the rear. And on top of that, this one does have the uh, Chevron reticle on it as well, red reticle. Uh, so, I mean, it is set up and ready to go. And like I said, it is, it's, it's built to take a beating <laughs> for sure. But now let's go ahead and let's just see what it's like to get some uh, target acquisition, shoot some of these guys a little bit, and of course, talk a little bit more about them and hear y'all's feedback or see y'all's feedback about your favorite ACOG. All right, let's give the, Three and a half power a try here. Again, great eye relief. So as far as shooting the three and a half by 35, I gotta say that eye relief, especially on a little bit heavier recoiling scar, feels great. Definitely something that I would prefer. That green tritium and green fiber optic pick up really bright, uh, especially on the closer targets, and it becomes very easy to focus on at a little bit distance target, or a little bit more distant target. Um, electrical tape would be good to keep on here, because like I said, even right now, it's not super bright out. We've got decent cloud coverage. Uh, it is uh, still pretty bright though. But as far as shooting it goes, let's just say I'm glad I got that a little bit further eye relief. All right, let's go ahead and load this guy up. We had a little bit more cloud coverage than before, and the red doesn't isn't as bright as the green, but it's still plenty bright. Let's go and take a couple shots with this, see where we're at here. We've got to hold right off the target. way off the target. <laughs> but as far as the 5.56 gun goes, I can understand the little bit shorter eye relief of the 4x32. It's nowhere near as recoiling as heavy as like a 308 or anything like that. So I get it. But <laughs> every time I go to the rifle range uh, with the Marines, I always see somebody who gets right up on it and then it just bop right into the eyes or they might try to you know see a little bit clearer. So they move their glasses down and they catch a nice little scope eye right up here to the top of the brow uh, or just right at the brow but anyway chevron reticle on this guy again left and right stadia with your bullet drop compensation what's neat too about the reticle on the rco is the fact that it's supposed to also be kind of like a range finder so if, when you're looking through it you can actually place the crosshair there on your target and judging by that should actually put you about where you need to hold in order to make contact with that target all right but uh anyway four by 32 shoots great but you'll notice too that standard thumb screws as i started to get into earlier uh notice how far forward it's sitting even with a 
iron side. It'd be really nice if there was something that actually just kind of moved it a little bit further back so I had a little bit better eye relief. You gotta think, on the M16 with that long fixed stock, you pretty much have to remove your, eye, your rear sight to get that proper eye relief. It's, if only somebody made something to try to help with that eye relief problem. Now look at this interesting little device right here. So we've got an American Defense Manufacturing mount with a what's called a cram mount. And what that does is it actually allows you to move the placement of the ACOG in your mount further back. And you'll notice just how it fits right inside almost the iron side. And another neat thing about that is this allows you to get that decent eye relief, retain your iron sight, and in case your optic fails you, goes down, breaks, gets shot, whatever it might be, most likely has to get shot in order to break because the ACOGs are uh, durable, to say the least. It's QD. You hit that little safety switch, throw the lever, and now I can pop that guy off and then utilize my iron sight if need be. Easy enough. Now let's see how that feels. Again, fixed stock M16, long length of pull on this guy. Let's see where my eye relief is with the ADM cram. Yeah, you're right, Ryan, this one's sided in. <laughs> that trigger feels good, too. Oh, I shot right over the head in the last two. Good job. What trigger is that? G2S by Geisley. That's solid. Okay, I was expecting a mil-spec trigger, and uh, it threw me off. But anyway, this is uh, Ryan's little FNM16, by the way, with the uh, ACOG. And this is, uh, was this, this is one of the surplus ACOGs we got in a while ago, right? Yes. It's old, but man, it still lights up bright. And tritium is fading, but it's still there. So, but awesome little setup. Again, getting that great eye relief, that proper eye relief here, and putting that optic a little bit further back so you can retain your rear sight while also utilizing that longer length of pull fixed stock on the found on the M16. Fantastic setup. But wait, there's more. Just in case you need a little bit, uh, I guess you could say, different, different placement as far as the optic goes to get yourself a little bit better eye relief, there's another mount that we can show you really quick. So again, the ADM allows me to retain my rear sight, which is something that I really, really appreciate. However, the ACOG, sometimes, you know, it's actually become so reliable that a lot of people are like, screw it, the rear sight gets in the way. Just get me a really, really good placement of the ACOG and I'll be happy with it. And that's what we've got with the LaRue Tactical RCO sight here. And uh, this is something that is actually approved by the Marines. And you'll notice right down here, RCO Simplify. Thanks, LaRue. And this is also a QD mount. So you'll see just on the right-hand side, again, LaRue's mounting or QD attachment lever is quite easy. You just pull out to unlock, switch it around, and just rotate that lever, and then it unlocks it. Now keep in mind, too, that this ACOG is the edge reticle LED model. So there is no tritium, no fiber optic. Uh, out here right now, just utilizing the black uh, edge reticle feels good. So let's go ahead and make ready and shoot a couple rounds through this. And I wonder if my red dots sighted in. We'll, we're about to find out. There it is. What about the red dot? <laughs> Having to aim real low with that. All right. Man, that feels good. Now the ACOG is also designed to be shot with both eyes open, especially the ones that, you know, the illuminated models, things like that. Well, they're all illuminated. But what I mean by that is the bend and aiming concept. Uh, what that means is you keep both eyes open. Your dominant eye is actually focusing on the reticle. Your, your non-dominant eye is focusing on your target. The communication that happens between your eyes and your brain housing group up here pretty much overlays the images and allows you to actually well, engage your target with extreme accuracy uh, and close distance. So shooting these targets here, even though I'm using a four power optic, shooting these targets, which are only 20 yards down range, becomes something very easy. And I don't necessarily have to switch to my red dot sitting right on top. So it's a nice feature. So again, keeping my both eyes open, shooting through the magnified portion of this whole optic setup with the four power becomes, well, I got one shot off. Very easy, however. So it's something that I really like about the ACOG as well. Again, the short eye relief of the four by the four power ones, 
once you get used to it, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And the placement on your gun, the mount that you use will also make a huge difference. Now let's step it up to that precision boy. Last day, by the way, for the Nemo Executive Order giveaway, so make sure you head on over to ClassicFarms.com to get your entries in on this complete setup at no cost to you. Don't miss out. All right, now let's go ahead and take a couple of shots here with the 6.5 Creedmoor Nemo and the 5.5 Power ACOG. Again, this has that really large sunshade and that large objective lens, so it gives me a great field of view, especially downrange, which is a nice thing to have. This one's sided in too, that's nice. <laughs> so that feels great. I did notice though, my eye did creep up a little bit on that one there, and uh, it did hit my glasses just a little bit, but I mean. Oh, that's fun to do. All right, so. The five and a half power, this is again, ACOG markets this as more, or sorry, Trigicon markets this ACOG more as their precision ACOG, made for those a little bit longer distance shots. They do say that about 800 yards is where they would feel comfortable with this one and the six power one. Uh, for the other ones that we have mentioned, all the way down to three power and up, including the four power magnified optics and the three and a half power, they say 600 yards is the potential that you can get out of your optic. But of course, if you can't do that, it doesn't matter what your optic can do, now can it? So get out there and seek some training. So this one on more of the precision rifle build that we've got going on here with Nemo is on our current giveaway. Again, don't miss out on that. Now let's go grab that chunky boy on the, uh, on the suppressed scar. So now we've got this chunky boy, the six power by 48 millimeter objective lens ACOG. Again, designed for machine guns, but don't tell the Brits that because they're throwing it on their DMRs and uh, by LMT, which you know excites me. So let's go ahead and uh, try this out. But what I'm actually more interested to try out is the SCAR without FN's uh, break that they always throw on their SCAR variants. This is a flash hider. Let's see if there's actually much more recoil. I'm kind of interested by this here, let's see. Yes, there is. There is a lot more recoil, a lot more muzzle rise. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but let's see, aiming high. There you go. Ooh. Yeah, now that is something that uh, has some recoil. Now let's go ahead and just, let's fix that really quick. Let's see if by adding the silencer, that helps. I know a lot of you are down in the comment section, oh my God, he's suppressing another scar. Look at all these warranties he's voiding. Whatever, you're gonna get it for free eventually anyway. All right. Ooh, wow. Easy enough. Yeah, that's much more pleasant, all right? Now I will say this. The six power is a chunky boy, it's cool, and I think it looks really, really good on the scar. Um, but it's nowhere near as forgiving with the side alignment. I can't get those really quick shots off uh, without having to make some sort of minor adjustment. Let's try the one down range here. Again, I gotta aim real low. I think. I don't know. Where's a little bit more gas back to the face too. So yeah, it's nowhere near as uh, forgiving when it comes to your side alignment. Now it's also the only other model that actually lets you adjust, without having to use electrical tape, uh, the brightness of your reticle utilizing the fiber optic dial that you see right here. So opening it and closing it, you want more light coming in, open it, you want less light coming in, close it, and it definitely makes a difference. Wow. Let's just go ahead and finish the mag out. I mean, it's here, right? So. That's a little gassy, I went for a dust cover that doesn't exist, that's kind of funny, muscle memory, right? But anyway, great. Which one's my favorite out of all of these? I'm just gonna get and tell you right now, it's the three and a half power. The three and a half power by 35 is just the one that just makes the most sense to me. It has the best eye relief. Uh, you can get all of these in different reticle options with the bu uh, bullet drop compensation without. There's so many different variations that you could get on one ACOG, uh, color of the tritium and fiber optic, the different types of reticles and everything else that you have. And I gotta tell you though, the three and a half by 35, 
that's the one I like the most. Granted, some of you might say, I really need that extra, you know, two and a half power on the five and a half. Uh, well, go for it. But that three and a half, that's where it's at for me. And those ones you can get uh, with, of course, 308, uh, BD, the BDCs and everything, like what we have on the other SCAR. So that's probably what I'll be taking off uh, on that one and throwing it on this one. Let me know what more would you like to see on this if we were to give it away. This is my silencer, however, and it'll be staying with me. That doesn't mean we couldn't give away another silencer, just saying, stay tuned for that. But we'll leave it off there. You guys know which one my favorite is. Let me know down in the comments which one your favorite is. Maybe it's the one on our current giveaway. Reminder, last day again for the Nemo Executive Order with the five and a half power A. Cog. It is also coming with the AccuTech bipod, the TriggerTech trigger. We threw on extra grips. We threw on all the sorts of neat things for that. And it is coming out of the factory with that carbon fiber wrapped proof research barrel. So some excellent stuff. Again, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Classicfarms.com is where you can get your entries. Utilize the code word you see at the bottom of your screen to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. And we'll leave it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you in your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at classicfarms.com.